believe that most of you are trying to wonder why I have a Kung Fu picture. I, I do practice Kung Fu. It's my, it's my other security job that I do. <laughs> so I, you wonder why you see the security security insecurities of the internet, but that's a, a Kung Fu picture, right? Because I try to protect people in any way I can. So I'm going to talk about the insecurities of the internet, but before I even start, I'd like to ask you a few questions. When you all came here right now, what, what were you told was the, was the Wi-Fi name? Check your Wi-Fi right now, that's another one. And the thing is, majority of you have already connected to my fake Wi-Fi, and I can see what you're doing. If you don't believe me, you can check. So I can basically see what kind of information you're posting. I can see the kind of uh, pictures that you're viewing on WhatsApp. No, not WhatsApp, I mean Instagram. Um, and the thing is, none of you knew that you're actually connected to a fake Wi-Fi. So do you know that actually connecting to any kind of, when you go to a coffee shop, the first thing you get to be asked is Wi-Fi. But how many of you know that anything that you do on the Wi-Fi can force you to download any file that you want, I, I, I want you to download. I can force you to go to links that you don't want to go to. When you're doing an internet banking, there's a possibility the one you're seeing is not what you see. It's mine. And how many of you know that when you're actually connected to that, I can control everything you do. I can force you to play music on your laptop and you can never turn it down. When you turn it down, it'll go back up. How many of you do know that? And did you know that every single time that you have you buy a new laptop, the laptop comes unencrypted? But the thing is, the unencrypted laptop you have is not really in the best state. It takes me five minutes when I have physical access to a Windows machine to actually compromise that laptop. I mean, that is if I'm really slow. Like on a slow day, <laughs> when I'm really tired, it takes me five minutes to break into a Windows machine. When you have a Linux operating system for the ones for techies, it takes me six minutes. Again, on a slow day. When I have a Macintosh laptop, which everybody feels like is the best or is the, is the most secure, it takes me six seconds. <laughs> because it's only these two combination of keys for me to actually compromise the Macintosh laptop. How many of you do know that? Oh, somebody said they know that. But again, did you know that every single time, how many of you open I mean, your business, men and women? and all of you are students somewhere, and you open documents every day. Did you know that when I send a Microsoft Word document to you, it only takes five seconds for me to actually control everything you do? I mean, I can, I can basically manipulate all the documents you have. I can actually change details on your laptop. I can add a new user, I can shut you down. <laughs> <laughs> and did you know that when I send you a PowerPoint presentation, the very nice PowerPoint you've been seeing around, it only takes you to hover over a small space. I don't need to click anything. You don't need to click. Yes, you're, you're, I'm pretty sure you're asking some sort of questions right now. You don't need to click anything, but just when you move the mouse a little bit by a millisecond, it only takes me to actually control what you watch, what you do. Basically, if you have a CD ROM drive, I'll open it and close it for you. I should be able to basically stay in your network or your systems, whatever it is, forever. Yes, I can actually listen to whatever is in the background. And if you have a smart TV on the same wireless network or whatever it is, I can control what you watch. Which I've done a few times though. <laughs> Again, every time we're in WhatsApp groups, people, we keep on getting things like, hey, uh, check out this new WhatsApp app, check out this new link. And uh, how many of you click on those links? I mean, I, I bet majority of you click on that, right? Don't you? Now, but the thing is, Mobile applications that you receive, it only takes one second for you to open that application for me to compromise you. And I'm talking about, I can take your WhatsApp database, I can send SMSs from your phone, I can listen to the mic, activate your camera back and front, and I can ideally force you to actually have things you don't want to have. How safe are you? And these are the kind of insecurities of the internet. I'm not saying don't use the internet, please use it. You can't survive without it. I bet some of you came here, you can't survive without social media, can you? Well, I think you, there's some questions that are going through your mind, and you're wondering if this is really true, right or wrong? Again, there are many times that when I come to you right now and say, hey, please, can I charge my phone for just five minutes? How many of you do that when you go to clubs, right? <laughs> when you go to offices, the front desk? Now, it only takes, again, seven, seconds for me to actually compromise your laptop when I plug in my laptop to charge. 
or when you plug in this flash disk. This is not your everyday flash disk, by the way. It looks normal, but it's not. This acts as what you call a human interface device, a mouse, a keyboard. When you, when you buy a new mouse and keyboard, did you actually have to install anything? No, it works out of the box. This is a re-modified, re reverse engineered flash disk that when I give it to you and you plug it into your laptop, it types everything that I want it to type. Yes, I don't need to touch a laptop. So basically what I mean is I can tell it to actually download a virus from my server somewhere and by the time I lean forward with a nice colon and smile at you, that's a good distraction for what? Seven seconds. And how many of you actually allow me to plug this into your flash, into your computers? Will you want to plug that? Well, he trusts me already. <laughs> but again, I do want to just give you a short demonstration of how some of these things work. I wish I'll be able to show you all of them, but let me just give you a little taste, right or wrong? Yes. All right. So, the first thing any hacker will ever use to compromise you is Google. Google is a highway for hackers. I'm not saying Google is bad, I love Google. But the way you Google, or the way you search for documents and information on Google is not the way I do it. When I decide to say, site, file type, doc, and I said, uh, let's say Kenyan law. This basically says that Look through every Kenyan website or .ke website, any Microsoft Word document that has the word Kenyan law in it. Now, I don't want to go further to the details of what I can do with the de or with kind of search engines. You want to see more? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Now, if I was to say that I'm looking for, say, a resume, somewhere deep down on the Nairobi University website, there are resumes of people that are so hidden, they are not supposed to be seen. Jaguar website, they are so hidden, you are not supposed to see. But with Google, these are some of the commands that you can actually use to actually compromise, not compromise, but basically grab information. And now you see, for a hacker to compromise you, he only needs enough information. So that's what I'm going to show you. How to get information. Now, I can use this, and again, if every day I want to, say, if I put, say, Title index of and I have to say DJ mixes and I'm making for Kenyan and they are coming in the form of MP3. Now, particularly DJ Shinsky, he's Kenyan, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. DJ Shinsky right now, his website tells you to possibly buy, to pay for anything, but with Google, you're gonna get the back end of it, or we call it an index for format, of which you can download for free. <laughs> okay, well, you can get this for free, and I mean all the music, all of it. So the very graphical interface that you ever have is not the same thing that I use. If I want to get information about you, I can find out every document that exists on every website in the entire world inside that document where your name has been mentioned. We are Safaricom, right? So assuming I want to find out details about you know, if I really want to not hack Safaricom, <laughs> they'll be very good friends. So, if I type something like this, I would like to use Safaricom as, a, as an attack vector. I would like to find out who says they actually work at Safaricom. And with that command, I can tell anybody who says, I can find out positions of people at Safaricom. Again, I'm only gathering information because if you work with Safaricom right now and you expect an, if you expect an email from the head of, uh, say, corporate affairs, you're going to open that email, don't you? Okay? But finding out this information is really good for me because now I know who the head of corporate affairs is, what he or she does, and what kind of information I can use to actually, actually social engineer you to actually open that document. Are we together? Can we, go, can, we, can we go forward? Anyway, back to a hacker. I'm not a hacker. Okay. <laughs> the most interesting tool to a hacker is this. What do you call a terminal? A terminal is basically some sort of um, interactive console, as we call it, to gather information. If I run this command, it's called the harvester. The harvester basically goes through every internet-facing website in the world 
where there is somebody at Safaricom being mentioned. And it gives me all the email addresses because what is important to me right now is I want to find out the naming conversion of Safaricom emails. So now I have information about who I want to target. I have information about who I want to use to target you. And right now, what you can see is the email address format. Okay? Again, when I finish that, I would like to find out what are the various ways that I can actually make you believe. I can't get an email at safaricom.com or see what I'm I mean, they won't give you, will they? Unless I work here. Right? So I run something basically to show me what are the possible ways that I can view Safaricom similar emails or similar domains, as we call it, to compromise you. Now, if you look at all of these results here, do they all look similar to safaricom.co.ke? You can ideally not tell the difference, can you? Pardon? Exactly. And if you see the question mark, the question mark basically means that nobody has registered that domain. That means for 2,000 Kenya shillings, I can purchase that domain, register the email that I have found where? Here. And I know who the person for corporate affairs is or anything, right? And I'll send you a very malicious document. Are we together? Now, finding out such an information, I still need some form of uh, detail about you. So, um, when you all came here, you started tweeting, don't you? But when you're tweeting, information can be grabbed about you. If I put, the lock, if I put, um, where are we right now? Safaricom? So, okay, let me put Safaricom house. <laughs> And I said I want to find out the GPS coordinates. And if I copy that entire GPS coordinate, I'll go to put that latitude, go back and put the longitude, and I put a range of one kilometer. I just want to find out everybody who's ever tweeted within one kilometer radius of this place. There's a possibility you almost might be there. And um, I want results. I don't want to put too many results, so I'll put 20. Well, I think you'll find very similar names, I mean, very famous names or names of people who actually are around this place. So these are all Twitter names of people who actually tweeted within one kilometer radius of Safaricom House. <laughs> are you seeing names that are familiar? Now, again, I'm only gathering information, so because if I do want to compromise somebody from Safaricom or within this range, all I want to find out is the Twitter handle. Do you know how powerful Twitter is? Can I show you? Yes. If I do want to find out more details about a particular person, I'll use my, my, my Twitter account, because I don't want to victimize anybody. I'll run that tool to find out every detail about who? Bright. And um, the result that it gives me is analyzing every Twitter account that I have. I mean, every single, I'm analyzing about 200 tweets. And let's see the results. Right here. Now, if you look at all of this information, it tells you how many tweets that I've ever tweeted, what kind of likes, when I, which, one, which ones have I retweeted, and what kind of information. Like, if you look at all of this, you can tell that I, I like to what? Retweet a lot, don't I? Again, if you look at the statistics here, if you look at all this information, you can tell I'm a techie. Okay? And if I go further, you can even tell the time that I like tweeting a lot. Daytime, at night, the particular time that I actually like tweeting, so you know when to send me a particular tweet. Now if you go further and look here, you'll realize that I'm, I am an Android user. Are we together? All this is information gathering using publicly available tools. We call them open source intelligence. I'm not using any tool that I've bought. No, I buy things, bro. <laughs> I don't steal anything, but I'm using publicly available information, so don't, don't feel like I'm stealing from anyone. Now, such information that I've gotten, I still want to find out again about Bright. What exactly is about Bright that I can find? Um, so I'll close this. I want to do an, I get to know Bright's email address, and with that, I just want to find out again from publicly available websites, what exactly is it about Bright that we don't know? Is he on social media? Is he on other social media that we don't know? If you look at these results here, I never like to show these results, but you know what? 
I'll show it to you. So now, Bright has another name, what called what? Damily. And uh, he's somewhere associated with what? Africa Hackon. You can see his Facebook account, Foursquare, Google. A gravatar is basically an image of you. Um, we look at an Instagram account. Cloud, Cloud is an application that was collectively connected to other social media from Facebook. And then there's MySpace, which I actually thought I deleted, though. <laughs> because I can't remember having a MySpace account. But if you actually open that, you will see my space account and pictures of me. And um, Pinterest, which, if you look at this name here, that's a code name. I used to use that when I was in, a little bit into hacking back in the day. Yeah, so that was my code name in the, in the underground space. Underground, quote unquote, here. Yeah. <laughs> and my Twitter account, YouTube, and what? Jenna is what? Tentative City? Nice City. And if you click on all these pictures, I mean, these images, I'm not going to open them. <laughs> but uh, those are pictures of me. And I don't want to open them right now. But this is a basic information gathering again about Bright. If I really wanted to go further and find out more information, this again, publicly available tools. I want to find out every picture Bright has ever tweeted about. And showing the results are right here. It analyzes every tweet that I ever have, and you can see that I've tweeted a lot. And if you look at all of those, what does it show? Again, I'm a techie. Are we together? Having all this information is good enough for a hacker to be able to exploit you. And um, to do that, I will set up what you call a command and control. A command and control is basically a command, a master who sends out a messenger says, go into my progressive center, pick out everybody who's wearing black. When you find them, slap them. <laughs> and he was like, okay, I have slapped. I was able to slap about um, 30 people. He's like, okay, now go back and check who is wearing brown shoes. And he'll be able to count. So the command and control is sending out something. Now, sending out this, if you look on the screen right now, this is my target machine. I'm going to send out a very simple Microsoft Excel document. So as the Excel document is opening, you will think it's, it's, a, it's a normal Excel sheet, right? But I intentionally put an error, of which when you want to read, by the time you read that error, it's giving information, it's going to give a connection to this laptop, which I'm waiting for. When you click OK, it closes. Slow internet connection. Anyway. <laughs> it's a connection from, uh, is the doors, are the doors open? Because there's a connection between this, which is not working. Let me see. gathering is all that it takes to actually compromise you. And as I wait for that to happen, oh, there we go. Ah, there. In fact, two connections. All I have to say is sessions interact with the first one. Now, I like to show people exactly live demonstrations because you have no idea that this is actually showing information about you. When you think it's actually a very nice document you're opening, but we can see exactly what we see. <laughs> Are you waving? <laughs> but again, you see, that is just having a Microsoft Word document open. What if I try to plug in this flash? Do you want to see what happens? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to close this. And. Um, I have to end this first, then. Again, I'm setting up my command and control. The command and control being set up, I want you to see, I think from far away you cannot see it properly, but just look on, on the screen what happens when I plug in the flash disk and count how many seconds that it takes. Okay? So, 
that is setting up right now. You know, most of what they do when they, when they, there's something called demo gods. You know, demo gods, everything works off stage. When they get online, <laughs> they, they start showing, it starts getting slow. Anyway, good. So if you look on the screen right now, I'm going to plug this flash disk in. And if you start counting one, two, three, four, five, it closes and I walk away. In that five seconds that I've walked away, I have a connection to the laptop. Do you believe me? No, you don't. Anyway. <laughs> Because, again, when I do this, I will have to shut down. So if you look on the laptop here, and I'm very malicious to this person, I will should be able to shut down this laptop. <laughs> Are we safe? <laughs> How many, and I can do this with my phone. This other phone, I can do the same thing with it. I can do this with, or oh, I have other flashes that are very interesting. Now, when I plug into your laptop, again, for seven seconds, or the longer that I stay with you, you should be able, it could, it could copy any file in the background. It could copy anything, such as your browser passwords, your files in the, my, my, in the, C, in the drive C, or whatever it is that you have. I can basically instruct it to do anything. How safe are we? Well, that's just a bit, and... I don't want to go into mobile applications because if I want to show you the mobile part of it, it can get a little bit more freaky, right? <laughs> so, now that you're scared, now what? Are you scared? Are you, are you sure? But I've only shown you 5% of what we can do. But you want to see more? I wish I could, just for some time. So, how do you stay safe? We need to do more awareness than technology. You and none of you were aware of these things to be able to happen. That's why you did not know. But now that you know, what do you do? Don't, you can't rely on technology all the time because let me tell you something. Every week I create a new virus to bypass antiviruses. That's not work. It's what I, like, I love to do. So if we are working so much on technology, we can't actually prevent some of these things. Kind of information that you share. We share so much information on social media. And the thing is, that information is what we actually use to compromise you. Right? So limit the amount of information you share on social media. If you don't want it there, don't put it. And then, of course, any kind of email you get, links that you get, scrutinize the detail. Look at the email address of the source. Somebody got compromised the other day because of Airbnb. She actually went to register on Airbnb, and guess what? They replied with Airbnb with what? A double I. She did not see that. She paid 3,000 pounds to them. For a house in Rome, and guess what? They sent all the details. Like, you know what? You can send this, this uh, money to this person in your account. Blah blah blah. And then she paid. That cash was gone. So scrutinize email and documents. Pay attention to anomalies. If you feel like your mouse is moving too fast, <laughs> or you feel like there's something not right, or your camera all of a sudden comes on, or the light comes on, shut down. Because for, for someone like me, when I have access to your laptop, the next 10 seconds is to run a command to what you call a persistency. It stays in there for as long as I want it. Meaning every time you restart the machine, it will always call back home. My home. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, and also, every time we get updates on our systems or on our phones and the like, what do we usually do? We click cancel. It's a very typical habit we do. Allow the computer to update. Allow the antiviruses and stuff to update. Because you need to remember, the internet does not forgive, the internet does not forget. Thank you very much.